In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to make antenna measurements without the use of calibrated references or system calibrations. We will take an actual lab measurement and demonstrate the results. In the lab, we had two platforms and one reference horn. On platform B, we used a diamond engineering dipole. On platform C, we used a diamond engineering patch. And finally, on platform A, we had a reference horn which was centered midway between the median of the two other platforms. When we look at the actual measurement setup, the first thing one might notice is that there are distances between the platforms that were not necessarily equal which needed to be considered. If we examine this as a generalized three-point method, we have assigned our horn as AUTA, our dipole as AUTB, and the patch as AUTC. The distances are representative of the measurements of the phase points of each. If we solve for the gain of AUTA, we end up with the path loss from B to C divided by the path loss from A to B, and A to C times a measurement quantity. We recognize this entire equation as the simple gain transfer where a measurement is divided by a reference and divided by a path loss. In this case, the measurement would be S21AB times S21AC divided by S21BC. The effect of path loss is from A to B times the path loss of A to C divided by the path loss from B to C. The path loss proportional to the actual distance squared yields an effective path loss distance for AUTA as distance 1 times distance 2 divided by distance 3. If we interchange the subscripts, we can easily derive the equivalent distances for any of the three antennas. For example, if we were in a chamber with a distance of 3 meters between both A and B and A and C, but we had a distance of 1 meter between B and C, we would have an effective distance of 9 over 1 or 9 meters. The effective distance of a triangle increases the actual path loss. In another example, if the distance between B and C was half a meter while the distance between both A and B and A and C were 2 meters, the effective distance for AUTA would be 2 meters. Of course, it's not to say that this is including the near-field contribution as it doesn't see near-field. The effective path is simply that path which ultimately represents the measurement of the antenna under test. Let us assume that we are making these measurements in a chamber and the chamber horn is permanently attached, pointing down to the center of the chamber. We would position the platforms visually symmetrical at about the center of the chamber. To avoid calibration, it's necessary for cable platform B and cable platform C to be identical. If we were also interested in just the horn gain, then all cables would have to be identical. However, in this case, we have added an amplifier to increase the transmit power of the horn, and we will then end up calculating the horn gain plus the amplifier gain plus the cable loss when we do the switching. If we assume that the dipole in AUTB is the real object of measurement, then we would want to rotate it around its azimuth or even its elevation. Only one element can be rotated in this process. AUTC cannot be rotated and neither can the horn. AUTC and AUTB will be pointed at one another. Independently, each of them will also need to be pointed at the horn to make these measurements. Clearly, we are operating off the bore site and on the side of the main beam, so we need to make sure that the volts per meter field strength of AUTB and AUTC are identical. To do this, we would measure the link gain for AUTA to B, and we would record this in the VNA memory. In our case, we've used an Aneritsu Lightning VNA. We would then remove the dipole AUTB and fasten it to AUTC to make the measurement once again. Ideally, if the beam is perfectly symmetrical and the platforms are exactly symmetrically located, we would have exactly the same field strength. However, this is something that rarely happens. To overcome this, we would move the AUTC platform and change its distance as necessary until the contours overlap to a sufficient accuracy on the VNA. Another option would be to repoint the horn, or AUTA, right or left until the field strengths are the same. In fact, this is a calibration method for calibrating differences in ripple inside of the chamber. We've actually performed these measurements, stored the data, and have now recalled them into Diamond Engineering's Antenna Measurement Studio. As we can see, in Data Register 1, we've stored the horn and the dipole data with a distance of 2.52 meters. In Register 2, we've stored the horn and the patch data with a distance of 2.6 meters. In register 3, we've stored the dipole and the patch data with a distance of 0.67 meters. 
Next, we're going to employ the three-point gain module with the proper distances entered. Now we'll load the calculated gains into the registers in place of the measurement data. When we do this, we can see that we have the various gains in the registers. AUTA is the reference horn, which is stored in register 1. AUTB is the dipole, which is stored in register 2. And AUTC is the patch, which is stored in register 3. Now we'll examine this data with the network simulator monitoring plot. First, we'll recall the measurement gain of the dipole located in register 2. We can see that we have a good dipole gain, but because we've used no calibration and the cables and the system are imperfect, we can see some rippling throughout the profile. This rippling can be removed by employing the data filter. The data filter with 10 points is usually sufficient for removing ripple. So we're going to specify the dipole gain in register 2 and recalculate the gain and compare the two plots. As you can now see, the ripple has been effectively eliminated. Next, we're going to recall the patch gain data located in register 3. We can see it has a high gain level of about 8 dB. We'll now change the register attribute on the data filter icon to register 3 to once again eliminate this ripple. Upon completion, we can see that the refined patch data displays a very nice profile. Next, let's recall the reference horn, or AUTA, data. In order to view the profile, we must first change the scale of the graph to 40 dB, since this data represents the horn data and the amplifier data. Finally, we recall the dipole data and investigate its profile in the polar plot. We'll go to 3 dB per division and go to the maximum signal, which has been exhibited at 3.5 dB of gain, where we can see that the profile is nearly perfect with its symmetrical profile. So we can see how effective this method is for making raw measurements without system calibration and no reference data. This can be effective in either a chamber or even in an environment where a level of multipath is present. Once the fields in volts per meter are the same, then the corrections are accurate. In an actual chamber, if two horns were present, one from the side and one from the end, it would be possible to make measurements consistently and easily with no reference and could even be utilized to make your own references. And this concludes our video tutorial on making measurements with no reference or calibration. We hope this helps demonstrate the power of the three antenna method with unequal paths. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave us a comment, email us, or give us a call. Thanks for watching.